Hello guys and girls and welcome to episode 23 of the VR Inside podcast. This is a weekly VR, AR and MR talk show that's live streamed every Saturday on Nathie's YouTube channel. You can tune into the show live at 4pm in Europe, 3pm in the UK and 9am in Central US. If you miss the podcast you can catch up with the whole show where I upload it every Sunday on my own YouTube channel Virtual Reality Oasis. Or check out the audio-only version, which is available on Google Play Music, iTunes, and on SoundCloud. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback during the show, please put them in the chat, and we'll try to answer as many questions as we can. This week, I also want to have a bit of a thank you to Paradise Decay for helping moderate the chat as well, because he's been doing a cracking job, and we haven't uh, recognized him for all his hard work in the past, so thank you very much for all your help, mate. Mm. Uh, so let Definitely. me introduce you to this VR A team. First up, we have the face man, Nathy. How you doing, dude? You all right? Did you just call me a, like a member of the A team? That's it, man. Your your <laughs> face. That's that's your designated member that I've given you. So that does mean that I always miss in video games too, because they they never <laughs> shot anyone. <laughs> In the series. <laughs> That's true. I want to see the episode where you build a tank in a barn. That's the one I want to see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, like. How you doing, dude? You alright? Yeah, I'm doing fine. Yeah, I'm just uh, enjoying the weekend at the moment. I'm trying at least. Because I'm still addicted to VR in the meanwhile. That's know? it. But uh, I'm we'll, chilling. We'll, trying. We will never give up that addiction. That is for no. sure. No. Next up, we have our own resident BA Baracus. It is the rowdy man. <laughs> the rowdy guy. <laughs> How you doing, I was dude? already thinking, who's going to be B.A. Barakas then? Because, you know, I, I, I could be a Murdoch as well. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like a crazy guy, but I kind of I I I like that. Yeah, I'm the, I'm, the, I'm the big guy who beats everyone up and who doesn't like people. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I ain't getting no, ain't getting no, no plane. <laughs> <laughs> you fool. <laughs> you fool. And finally, we have the howling dog Murdoch. That is <laughs> Zimtok 5. <laughs> Hey, How you doing, mate? You all right? Good. Good. It's a nice attribution given that this week, I just finally, after 11 years, we got a dog. You did. A nice you did. big dog. Not a <laughs> yeah, sweet little true. dog. We got a big dog. Congratulations on your furry baby, man. Thank you. I love it when a plan comes together. I am, of course, Hannibal uh, from uh, Virtual Reality Oasis, the host of the show. So let's uh, dive into this week's episode. We're going to be talking about in-depth... We're going to be talking about V-Real, motion simulators, and the Vaughn AR glasses from Intel. So we've got an interesting episode for you guys. Uh, but we're going to start off this week's show like we do normally now. Uh, and that's finding out what everyone's been up to this week. Because uh, we've all been up to uh, interesting things, I'm sure. So let's start it off with Zim. What have you been up to this week? Other than, obviously, uh, getting a little fur baby uh, addition to your life. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, Yeah, so I... Um... Other than getting, God, that was that was some trip. It was a trip. I, I'll tell you how good a driver I am, because you guys know I'm into sim racing and stuff. So we've been doing more of that. I set up, I, I built four computers this week. Um, wow. So that was that was wow. a bit tough. But I basically, we're running uh, we're running uh, ten a set of sort a course of servers plus the Minecraft servers that we've got. Um, so trying to do wait, that. Wait, 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 wait. You built four computers, but they're all for yourself. They're uh, one, well, so both of my kids have one, and I've got two yeah. acting as servers, yeah. Nice. Yeah, sure, you're just mining. <laughs> Wait, you're not mining. <laughs> That's where all the graphics so, cards have gone. I'm so himself. glad that, have you seen, like, the graphics cards prices are stupid now. Yeah, oh ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, I bought like two 970s a while back, but no, I mean, the main thing I did this week was finally finish L.A. Noir. So, nice. did all the cases. Ah. Um, oh. And actually, I had a bit of an issue. Impressive. As many of you know, oh. I'm a Twitch streamer. I got very nervous when oh. a full form naked woman was laid out in front of me, everything showing to my entire Twitch audience. So I was like, duh, we're screwed. But apparently it's okay in, 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 in games, as long as you don't like center it around the sexuality. So I, I was waiting for you to say, as long as they're dead, it's fine. <laughs> 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 as long as there, she was, it was. As long like, as it, dead, it was fine. actually really hard in <laughs> VR. Like that CM. makes it even worse. Then <laughs> I know. Yeah, 
it was, it's it was, fine it was as hard. long as they're dead. It, it was hard seeing <laughs> it. It was actually hard seeing it. As some of you know, I've done mortuary duty, so I used to work in a morgue. I used to shelve bodies, and like people wow. would be recently deceased, and I'd I'd do that. So I've actually got that as on my CV. <laughs> Not joking, but uh, it was <laughs> it was tough seeing it because like she was you know throat cut, and like you move her head, and the game does the whole like <laughs> sound, and it was like, Ooh. feck yeah. me, like this is tough. So I'd yeah. say the game is. I was expecting it to be a little bit more active. I like the interrogation bits. I kind of wish there was more to it. Because it felt mm -hmm. like you do the intro bit, there's like six other cases, and then you're done. Which well, was we, fair we for the price, talk about but this. It, it's, uh, it, all I want from that is I now want an open world Rockstar game. Yeah. Sure. But that, that's what we said as well. Like, cause it felt like they were like dipping their toes yep. into VR yeah, and then see like you know what uh, what the response to that would be. That makes makes sense. Actually, Rockstar is here in Edinburgh. I'm gonna so try to apply to them. <laughs> I've got skills they can use. So we'll see. Who knows? So how many hours did you spend on the game in total before you finished it? It was three streams worth, but one of them was cut short. So I'd say six to seven. But I'm okay. I'm, I kind of relatively paced, and we were just like blazing it through the city. Like uh. that's one thing. the The city is big. It's like one of the, you know, not one of the latest Grand Theft Autos, but say like GTA Three or something. Mm. Like it's it's a big city. You can just drive freely around and see stuff. So that's cool. And how is uh, the bugs? Have they kind of been ironed out now, or are they still there? Mostly. I think the one thing I saw in the last stream was we walked down this corridor. Uh, sorry, hallway. Corridor makes it sound too gloomy hallway and on the left there were two statues of cats just floating in the air it was like there's supposed oh, to be nice. a table asset there no doubt but um, wow right so yeah there's some bugs <laughs> okay. but it's, there's nothing unplayable uh it's good but, fun it's just some people get aggravated at the fact that you have to replay certain scenes like the interrogation is very much you play it until you get it right and sometimes that can be a little bit frustrating but i only got yeah. caught on one interrogation so they're relatively okay. straightforward yeah it's worth it's still worth buying i think it, it's uh, not mm -hmm. it's a consider for me it's not a it's not a must buy, but it's 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 cool for what it does. But you're playing it on the the Vive, right? I was playing it on Rift actually. Oh, okay. Because I had some no, real issues sorry. with the game on Rift. Sorry. Yeah, you're right. No, Vive, Vive. Yeah, yeah. I think it's still this this the same case uh, with the Rift version. Like, if you play it on Rift, it's it's still very buggy. Uh, I certainly experienced mm. that myself, but I haven't gone back to it since I initially played it. So maybe they've ironed some stuff out. But uh, they did mark it as a, a Rift game on uh, Steam. Uh, I mean, a purely a Vive game, you mean? Oh, he's asking, yeah. is it advertised? Like, is it advertised as a as Rift enabled on Steam? Do, do you know? Uh, no, I don't think so because there was a little workaround you had to use initially. Uh, to just stop whining. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's just work, of course. <laughs> yeah. I'm here. Bringing out the big guns so already, was, Navy. We're like so five sleep minutes deprivation in. I just PC. roasted Zim, uh, uh, VR Oasis, and Rowdy will be soon next. Don't worry. Peeps. Stay it's tuned gonna for that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, what else? Other than LA Noir, you been checking anything else out? Uh, I know there's something else every week. I forget now, Mike. Now that, now yeah, that I'm controlling good. the podcast, I'm like, I can't go quickly check on a browser. Every device of mine is absorbed. So um, okay. I can't remember is the honest answer but I'm oh, sure there cool. was one other yeah. game I finished off. The only thing that we'll talk about, of course, in a few minutes is In Death, which I just checked out literally yeah. two hours ago. Yeah. So I'll tell you a little yeah. bit more about that later. Excellent. Okay, uh, what about you, uh, Rowdy? What have you been up to this week, mate? Yeah, I've played a, a game called The Snow Globe. It's something uh, something new. I haven't released a video on it yet, uh, but it's uh, more like a, a puzzle kind of game. It felt, uh, I think it's made by one person. It kind of feels a little bit that way as well uh, in terms of like... Um, uh, the the voiceovers I think because I I don't understand anything that the voiceover uh, are saying just because they're like pitch shifts so much that I I can't understand anymore. But it is a it is an interesting uh, kind of title. I kind of like those kind of like more escape room kind of things. It's not really an escape room, but it's more you need to like uh, solve a puzzle to get to like the next area basically. Okay. That's that's how it works. It's yeah. called the snow globe. And then I've okay. played um, uh, Highway Madness. Yeah, I saw a bit uh, of your video, actually. Your <laughs> it was yeah. hilarious. It, you can play it with friends, apparently, because uh, I, I first thought I was in a multiplayer match and I was just shouting at all of those other people. But it's, it's kind of <laughs> hilarious because um, the, the concept is basically you need to just cross like a, a busy high road, it's, uh, it's a busy highway. It's crossy road VR, right? Basically. Uh, what? It's crossy road VR? Yeah, That's yeah, kind yeah, of what something it's like, like that. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, you have like those like kind of like Mario Kart like boosters that you can pick up like speed and thunder and uh, it's it's yeah it's, it's a, I had a good laugh playing that one. It's not something that I would like recommend someone buying probably, but 
It would be hilarious to see like all of us like in that game like just like mm. acting stupid and trying to, it's to a free get game, that far right? in. What? It's free. Yeah, it's free. It's a free title. Oh, oh is right. it multi That's... or is it just single? It's it's multiplayer. It's multiplayer. Really? Right, right. Yeah, you can yeah. play. You can play it in multiplayer as well. I, I haven't tested a multiplayer, so I don't know how well it works. I do. It reminds but, me uh, of that classic frog game where you had to cross the road. How was it called again? Frogger. Frog. Frogger. Frogger. Yeah. yeah. Frogger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and there's then one another game... one I played. Yeah, oh, I was going to say, there's one game that I really want to hear about that uh, I saw you uh, making videos <laughs> Baby about. Hands. <laughs> Baby, Baby Hands. Baby Hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's actually, it's, because um, at first I tried it, uh, I was like, eh, I, I, don't really, I don't really get it. But there's a lot of stuff in that game. There's really a, a lot of stuff that you can, it's not really like the, the kind of like, game game you know it's not really a lot of interactivity but mm. there's like a lot of like stuff that you can find and that you can uh discover and kind of like mess around with because i i mean i went back in there uh, yesterday i released a video on that uh just to like to try and like do some of the tips that some of the of my viewers gave me and i tried to like uh, uh to get some of those things and i still haven't found all of it because of my second video were already like like 10 or 20 more comments that were saying oh you should do this and you should that you should combine this with that uh, it's a it's an interesting kind of concept. Yeah. yeah, I think in one of the videos, I can't remember who uploaded it, but they were like showing a baby like picking up a mobile phone and then just like flushing it down the toilet and just doing like yeah, yeah, yeah. stupid baby but yeah, stuff. You do stuff like that, of course, yeah. because it's a, it's still it's a baby simulator. It's it's kind of cool, like the locomotion as well. They they did it with your hands. Yeah. So to move forward, you need to like crawl, crawl. like a baby does. <laughs> Like, uh, and you can like stand up, but when you stand up, you can't move anymore because you can't use your hands. So you need oh, to go okay. sit down again and like. It's kind of fun. Yeah, it's it's, a, it's an interesting kind of concept. Yeah. Nice, nice. So what about you, Nathy? Have you been a baby this week as well, or what have you been up to? Uh, no, not yet. I I am planning to play it because okay. I need to do it for some hands, of course. Of course. But, <laughs> hey, uh, I have played uh, um, Townsman VR. Mm. A um, well it. it, it Plays like an Age of Empires uh, uh, title, pretty much in VR, and uh, uh, in that game you uh, rule an island. It's like a god simulator, you know, and you can just uh, uh, build stuff from above and and help the the villagers out. You can um, gather supplies. Like for example, like Age of Empires, you had to send like a, a person to a tree to cut it, right? So if you want to, uh, you can drag these people to the tree so they can cut it faster. Plus, you can also help them carry the wood together. So it's like you can team up uh, with your villagers. So if they are done cutting the tree, you can say like, hey, you know what? I, I will carry the, the wood for you. So you just carry it to the place where he needs to drop it. And oh, it goes a lot faster. Okay. But at some moments you get attacked and then you need to fight like the bad guys because there's like uh, a head popping uh, uh, in front of you, popping up. And uh, then you need to fight the person first. It's like a boxing match. Uh, and then he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna come back, you know, with more, with my army. And then you see like little ships and it's really like an, 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 an uh, interactive uh, game where you can shake the trees, you know, or grab uh, fish out of, uh, out of the river and uh, mm -hmm. hit the bell in like the, the town itself. Uh, you can even uh, blow uh, at the windmill, so uh, it actually spins. That's cool. Oh, that's yeah. neat. So uh, yeah, Those I would cool definitely uh, 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 take a look at that game. It's it's really nice. It's really cool. Uh, I haven't really seen many people play it yet, but uh, mm. yeah, uh, I played Qu that one. Question. Also... Question for you, Nathan, on this: Can you kill the villagers? Because I'm a black and white fan. You, know? you can drown them, uh, yeah. So you grab like a villager, and then you, and when you go on the water, you can actually hear them like. <laughs> so you can, you can, you can just. No, no, it's true. So you have a villager, and it's like, and then you put him like on the water. He's like. <laughs> Nice. Go oh, check uh, it out. By the way, one more title that I played per Zim's request was a Subnautica. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. I tried that one as well. I have to say, yeah, I agree with you, Zim. It's a, it's a, a really cool title, even though. You can't use uh, motion controls like I was yapping about last week. It's uh, it's it's definitely worth checking it out in virtual reality. It's it's nice. a, how far did you get, Rowdy? Not far. Okay. Uh, I didn't die. I mean, I, not that it matters since I played on like the what is it, like the easiest mode yeah, yeah. Uh, thing. Freedom. Uh, and I, I I I built like a base right next to my base, which probably also wasn't a very smart thing to do. 
Um, but uh, I just built like this like little thing that like like speeds me forward. Like you need to hold it in your hands yeah. and like it blows oh, you awesome. forward. I, I, I hate I hate that in VR. That's the worst little thing. The, yeah, the yeah. faster you can get rid of it, it just like goes in front of your face. I can't yeah. see anything. Uh, oh, I'm glad you tried it. I'm glad you had a good time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely one that I want to go back to as well. Um, yeah. But yeah, I have to say, like the the townsman, like you were saying, uh, Nathy, it looks way more interesting, like uh, than the handful of Keflings game that we were talking about. No, as, that, that's yeah. what I was also thinking. I was like, hmm, this is more. But the only problem is that all the interactions are really fun, and it's it's cool to drown people and do things like that. But after a while, it does get old. It's mm. like something you do once, and then it's like, okay, I've done this next. So you think you have a lot of possibilities at the start. But in the end, it's about the core gameplay, and uh, right now it's an early access title, and uh, you know after the tutorial, you have pretty much seen and played everything. But uh, yeah. I would just keep an eye on the on the title and see how the developer is going to update it. Um, I also uh, explored uh, Sensar, a, a platform where you can mm. uh, uh, explore and create mm. your own social VR experiences. Uh, the people who made that are uh, also the ones behind uh, Second Life. So they are now oh. trying to push that to <laughs> VR. Uh, and uh, I checked out a few worlds. Uh, I did one video on one world from Ready Player One. Uh, Mike also played it, uh, H's Garage. Yeah. And uh, I amazing. It's it's beautiful. I, I played it on the Vive first. Didn't really work that well. Uh, okay. It was really laggy. Uh, and then I played on the Vive was like, or on the Rift. It was totally fine. So yeah. right now uh, with the Vive... It's not that great, but it's completely free. So if you want to check it out, then uh, be my guest. Where does so Sensor fit? First off, do you know what it? Do you know what the name uh, stands for by any chance? No. no. Sensor. And uh, Sensor. is it equivalent? Because someone introduced it to me and said that it was kind of equivalent of like Janus or Alt Space or VR Chat. Is it that same yeah. kind of? Yeah, thing? So it's a, it's a so yeah. social uh, application. So you know, say you could go into H's garage like uh, Nathan and I did and explore like what's in there, but you could do it with a friend. Uh, or a group of people and, and discuss your yeah. findings with them as you walk through it, which is kind of interesting. But and it's remember, really cool. It's really yeah, nice. Yeah. It's funny because Paradise Decay, um, he did a video on it and he didn't realize that it was social and that anyone could join his room. <laughs> so he was walking around in his video and then some bloke just come up to him and he just literally like jumped out of his skin because uh, he wasn't expecting it. So that was kind of funny. But yeah, well, it's it's the same. I was doing I was doing my video and suddenly there was like a guy standing behind me. He was AFK for like an hour. He has been in my recording. <laughs> for an hour and I'm not sure if he was even there but he didn't move at all it was kind of strange <laughs> um, but uh, I also went to uh, a, 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 a NASA museum really really nice I, I could uh, uh, get a tour an audio tour while uh, watching all the spacecraft um, so some of the worlds have been made by Sensar Studios those ones are looking very polished and then you have the ones from the community some of them are super cool and some of them are well, kind of mad but uh, there's a lot there from from Star Wars to Ready Player One. It's all there. There's even a Star Wars museum inside the Millennium Falcon. Ooh, that's very oh, interesting. Wow. Yeah, yes. I should go back to that one really because, like, a, like you say, the Ready Player One experience was very polished, and if if the other experiences are as polished, then they're going to be very mm -hmm. uh, very cool to check out. Yeah, you can join with your well. friends if you want, or alone. It's up to you. And there's also a pancake first for the people that do not own a VR headset yet, so Smart. everyone can play it. So I'm, I'm a little confused now because last week we talked about this. H's Garage. There was an experience that was taken down, and now there's a Sansar experience as well. No, no, no. You're getting confused no, no, no. with the Blade Runner uh, experience ah, from Steam. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, yeah. thanks, yeah. Mike. No, no worries. The Sansar one uh, is is an official Ready Player One uh, experience. So there's only one H's Garage so far, because I thought Mike, you did something in H's Garage and did a video on it. Yeah, that was the same one. That was that. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Same, okay. same thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so this week uh, I've been checking out uh, Kin. I don't know if you guys have seen that one. Yep. It's yep. a uh, really colorful platformer uh, on the Oculus Store. I'm not sure if it's available yep. on Steam, actually. Um, mm. But essentially you, you overlook a, a, a sort of a, a giant map and they're little islands, essentially, which uh, change from screen to screen. So your goal is to get your little character from the left side of the screen or where the little portal is to the exit essentially but there's enemies and little sections mm -hmm. where you have to jump in between and then once you got to the exit then that's the next level and uh. you keep progressing that way uh, but it's actually quite challenging I found uh, even the first like maybe 10 screens were, yeah. were fairly challenging actually and uh, I think it's kind of one of those games you kind of got to get a feel for the jumping 
uh, and also the fighting mechanics because there's like a dodge mechanic as well. But the enemies are pretty tough right from the get-go, so uh, it's one that you're probably going to have to sit down, get to grips with the mechanics, uh, the enemies, yeah. and, and the timing of like when you need to dodge and, and attack. Uh, but once you've kind of got that, I think it'll be quite a satisfying game to play through. Is that um, like? It's not, no. So okay. each level is set. Um, you do lose lives, but when you do lose lives, you just go back to the the beginning of the last screen. So okay. it's not that punishing. Uh, is there is a storyline nice. in there or not? Uh, so the basic storyline is that you you've kind of woken up in a little egg. Uh, there is like some other spaceship references as well. So I think there is a loose one, but it's not like a narrative driven mm -hmm. storyline. No, it's just no kind problem. of one that is explained through the world that you experience and you kind of make up yourself, I guess, as you go along. Um, yep. But some of the boss fights actually look kind of uh, interesting, like huge bosses. You're like this small little character running around. Uh, so uh, I'm looking forward to going back to that one. Yeah, so so out. since this is a third person uh, uh, game, I played it myself too. I, I played it standing up and mm. that worked too. But on the Oculus homepage, I couldn't really find anything about... Usually it says uh, like seated or standing, but this mm. one... I don't know, and, and the developer also didn't really tell you how to play it. Of course, you can play Lucky still standing too. I mean, I did that and, and it works. But it's kind of like weird to have like the world over here going through your waist, you know? Yeah. And, and it feels yeah. kind of strange. But it, I felt more free because the world starts like all the way in your corner of your play space and then goes all the way to the other side. So when you're seated, it's like, okay, oh, there you go, you know? And, and when I'm standing, I can just walk there and it felt more free. Like, mm. it would just get closer, and I don't know, uh, would you, like... Yeah, I totally agree. Like you say, because the world is so small, the way it's represented on screen, it would make sense to walk around it and follow your character as they move. But yeah, I, I actually played it seated, so I was just sat in one position. But I, I'm, I've got quite a big play space, so I could just, like, scoot my chair around, I guess. But uh, yeah, like, moving around would make sense uh, to play it, definitely. But you can play it with yeah. the touch controllers, but obviously touch isn't integrated. It's just you use the buttons as a controller, essentially. Yeah. Okay, started me off on such a morbid spin. I just imagined Mike, like, with his headset on, just, like, scooting the chair back, 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 and then falling down the staircase. So, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. there, there is a banister there, so I am protected to a certain degree. And the carpenter says it is sturdy, so I do trust him. <laughs> you did ask. Um, so um, I also played uh, Sorrento. Uh, I hadn't played that game before, but obviously it came out in early access a while ago on Steam. Finally made it out on full release on the Oculus Store. And from the short bit I did play of it, I haven't played a, a massive deal of it, but uh, there was like a story narrative, which is kind of cool. It's got this kind of nice cyberpunk ninja kind of setting. Um, and it's kind of one of those games that it's not graphically great, but a bit like Super Hot, it, when it... When you're moving around and slashing uh, these samurai down and good. getting your guns out and jumping in the air and then bullet time and then sliding and then slashing again and stringing all these combos together, it really makes you feel like a badass. Uh, it really does. Mm. Um, uh. So uh, I'll have a full review on it next week when I've got a chance to play it some more. But yeah, first nice. impressions, uh, I like I like the mechanics uh, so far. They're, they're pretty neat. Mm. Did, the um, HUD, did the HUD piss you off? Because I saw that and I was like, there's HUD everywhere. I'm just like, oh, come on. The, the only thing that uh, I thought was a bit strange is that you just can't naturally move. Is that right? You, you can only jump. Oh. Is that right? So, like, from what I've played so far, uh, I can only do, like, a like a jump. So you, you aim like a teleport, and then you jump mm -hmm. that way, and then you can slide. But I don't think you can just mo move around normally. So you're just jumping all the time. Unless I'm it's completely It's been a while wrong. since um, I played that. I don't, yeah. I don't remember if I could uh, move around. Yeah. You played it rowdy as well? Then. Well, a long time ago, though. Yeah, like, it, was, uh, it was a long time it's been in early access. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, before we uh, sure. go to the next subject, uh, so Sprint Factor came out. Now, I saw Zim talking about Sprint Factor, and there was like a really interesting part of that that I never thought of in the first place. So, okay, listen, this is just a scenario that could happen. It didn't happen yet because it just came out. As you guys may know, multiplayer VR games are like... And not performing that well most of the time after a few months, you know, they become like a ghost game because mm -hmm. everyone has seen the game, they played it and they're like, okay, next. Yep. Of course, we got uh, examples that were really successful like VR chat, Rec Room, uh, you know, you can keep onward. On going onward. Uh, Pavlov is also still well, fairly popular. But Zim, uh, uh, tell me what you like uh, discovered on Reddit. Yeah, so you're talking about, um, <clears throat> so basically there was a, a post that, I don't know if it's Servios had kicked it off, but Servios was responding to the post about, you know, Sprint Vector launching. 
I was hugely into kind of Sprint Vector and all that. But what they confirmed uh, was that there will not be, or there's no plans for crossplay between PlayStation and PC VR. And it makes this very interesting point. And it's funny that you highlight it because it is, it's something you don't see in many games where either, we saw it with like Blaze Rush way, way back when Oculus launched and then it, it, it had this its own containment. And so it's like we had seven friends with a copy of the game on Steam, one with Oculus Home and they can't play with us, you know? And yeah. so I think it's actually going to be relatively common that you're going to have a group of friends, some who have PC VR, some who have that, and you can't play together. And also mm. you might find that, for instance, maybe Sprint Factor will do really well on PC, uh, on uh, on... Not PC. I actually think that PC will probably be the first one to maybe expire. And then maybe, you know, PlayStation will keep yeah. living for some months after it. But that's a really odd thing, isn't it? That they don't even consider the chance for bridging the two. Yeah, because well, you uh, said that there was like a small, small, like niche of people that are going to play Sprint Factor that really want to uh, work out. They're enough lazy people, basically. That's uh, that's the message. Well, I'll tell you what right? I did. I polled my audience. I was like, guys, who's going to go buy Sprint Factor now that we've, you know, played through the beta and stuff? Someone's like, didn't really like the beta. Uh, I'm too lazy to get up. And someone else is like, not enough energy. So a lot of it is people are saying like, I just don't have the energy. Or someone said, look, by the time I get around to playing this, it yeah. is probably going to be a ghost town. Which kind of hurts me because I got super excited about Sprint Factor. But I'll tell you the, the number one thing that I don't like about it. I'm going to play the full game on PlayStation just to see how the tracking is on the controllers. Mm -hmm. And also just see what that community looks like. Um, yeah. You know, I think it was uh, PSVR Frank launched a, a, a video of it. And um, he was saying, like, I've done my review so early that there's no one on the servers at all. <laughs> uh, which yeah. I thought was a funny <laughs> comment. Because I would expect it to kind of be flooded, to be honest, when it comes to mm -hmm. a launch game that's as excitable as that, that colorful and all that. But the gripe yeah. that I had was... If anyone's ever played like age old Counter Strike, there was Counter Strike Condition Zero, which had bot chatter like crazy. And you're like, where can I turn this off? That was a problem in the game. I'm playing a game, three other real life players, four bots. The bots are chatting so much that I can't talk over VoIP to the other players. They were in right. the way of the social experience. And right, it's like right. literally what I want to do is I just want to race with one other person, maybe a couple mm. of other people. I don't I, uh... want to just be blocked. And for a game, that's hinged around social to be blocking its own social dynamic. I was like, guys, you can't, you can't do it this way. And I don't know why they did the the closed beta so early, or like only a couple of weeks before launch, because it doesn't seem like they changed very much before launching. That's the mm -hmm. thing that upsets me. Yeah, it's yeah, interesting. Like you say, there isn't point. any cro very cross platform point. support because like uh, Rec Room now has cross platform support. You know, uh, Star Trek Bridge Crew had cross platform support, so you could play with PSVR players as well. Yeah. So it is possible. Yeah. It's totally uh, uh, feasible. And especially with I, a, with a market that is so small, because I mean, yeah. no, no matter how you turn it, I mean, we we kind of need the PlayStation VR players yeah. in games like Absolutely. that to like keep a game like that living. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, Mike, you shared last week in the podcast how many, like, um, games got sold, you know, and mm. uh, of course, I mean, we still don't really know if the numbers were, like, completely correct, but let's be honest, like, the numbers are way lower on PC than, than PlayStation VR, yeah. but yeah, uh, I would say enough about that, uh, we do have confirmation from our audience that uh, Sorrento, Sorrento does have full locomotion. Oh, okay, okay nice there we one. go. Okay, yeah. cool. Cool. Also, uh, while we're talking about our audience, uh, and we do love hearing your feedback and, and getting correcting us when we we're love wrong. You. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, because last week we mentioned uh, about the when we were talking about the Oculus Go, and we were talking about Minecraft, uh, whether that will come yeah. to the platform. Uh, Minecraft has been on Gear VR apparently for a long time. So you got uh, slapped around. We, we we got I got slapped around a lot in, in my uh, my comments. They're like, yeah, dude, it's been on there forever. So, uh, yeah, so sorry. Yes, we're wrong. Uh, Minecraft is but on But does it come VR. to Oculus Go? It would likely come to Oculus Go. If they don't bring it to Oculus Go, I'd be really surprised. Yeah. That yes. means it will. That is going to sell a feck ton. Yeah, because it is a full game, apparently. It's not like a watered-down version of it. It is the full I game. I am going to launch the video of my kids playing Minecraft in VR. Yeah, because totally. And the, actually, the, what, the while reaction this... the kids have to a world that they've built or... You know, mm. that, that environment that they're already custom, like used to, there was no hesitation. Yeah. In, my, in a one and year, three year old, no hesitation to engage with the world, go up to the animals, engage with stuff. It's like my daughter's first reaction was like, oh, I've got a sword. Yeah. It's like straight away out the box. And you're going to do that on a $200 headset? Oh, yeah. 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 It's going to be really cool. I think so, too. 
So we've got some other um, small news items that we want to talk about just very quickly before we jump into the main topics. And that is uh, the SpaceX uh, Falcon Heavy launch. I don't know if any of you guys saw it, uh, the live stream this week, but it was incredible. Uh, for those that you don't know, uh, Elon Musk, who who sort of is, you know, um, managing the Iron SpaceX Man. program. An alien. He's an he alien. Is, he is amazing. <laughs> he, he obviously, uh, you know, owns Tesla as well. Uh, and, and they actually launched, uh, it was one of the biggest sort of... Um, launches where they could actually take something into space so but they used these rockets that they could reuse again so after they did the launch which they actually launched a tesla roadster into space <laughs> which was <laughs> really cool they had like a dummy in the driver's seat wearing this new uh space suit that they've developed as well uh and uh, it was just such a cool live stream and then after that they done that if that wasn't good enough the rockets that actually pushed the main rocket into space came back down to earth and landed like simultaneously next to each other so they could be used again um so it's really pioneering space travel stuff uh, and i was really geeking out about it i don't know if you guys yeah. were watching it as well of course as, yeah. as i said yeah, i was course. really sad i saw gordon bacher or whatever the fuck his name was go into space and, and drop down a couple of years ago and caught that live and thought that was an amazing thing to experience yeah. this guy huge number of viewers i don't even know the number but i thought it was like hundreds of thousands of people watching this oh, yeah. thing live. Yeah, they were, yeah. And, yeah. and when that when that simultaneous landing happened, it looked like it looked like something from a like if you tried Alien to do movie. that in like a Blomkamp film or something, like you know they'd feck it up. But like this is yeah. just amazing. Like <laughs> yeah, what we're running is... right now on the stream is the video of these two landing. Yeah. And that's exactly how they came down in real life. And so yeah, I woke exactly. up out of a out of a haze because I was sick that day. And I yeah. watched this and I was like, no way. I was like, nah, this is like a this isn't real. Yeah, and it's funny because uh, on uh, SpaceX's YouTube channel, you can see some of the failed attempts uh, because they try and land it. Uh, they land it on a drone ship, they call it, which is a, a ship in the yeah. sea uh, where you can land uh, you, you, these things on. But they failed so many times, they fall over and they literally explode. So if you want to check that out, go and check that out on the SpaceX channel. But also, if you want to experience this in VR, you can actually sit in the seat of Starman uh, in, in VR and uh, sit in the Tesla Roadster while the Earth moves around uh, in front of you. And it was actually made by... Uh, Treeview Studios, which are the studios that made Alchemist Defender VR. They put this little 360 video together, which is available on YouTube. If you download that, you could experience that in like a virtual yeah. desktop, for example. So what if the star man, the guy who was sitting in the Tesla Roadster, the dummy, is Elon Musk, and there's now a doppelganger <laughs> on Earth it, it's he his clone. like Elon. Yeah, it's his clone. I, I, I'm, guys on, I'm on a negative Could be legit. Here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and throw this in there. What if it's a dead guy? Whoever Elon Musk <laughs> wanted dead, he just put him in the seat and he put him into space and everybody watched it. That's He's actually like, a Don't very, you very wreck with thought. Musk. And, and one in the front of the the, the 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 car and in the trunk on the back because there's enough space. So he could put like three bodies there. This is so bad. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we, we, we talked so, a lot of, about a lot of dead people today. I don't know so why. This, but, uh, is a dead th this stream has been running for half an hour. We've already mentioned a dead woman and a dead man in space. <laughs> in, in, a, in a roadster going yeah. to Mars. There will be no, no more dead I, people I, on this show. It was beautiful. I think it's it's really like uh, I, I watched it live, and it's just so epic to to see that happen. You know, it, it, it's so futuristic in a way. And uh, awesome. I mean, I, I like I'm I'm quite young, so I've never seen uh, anyone land on the moon. If if that was real or not, who knows? Uh, that's a big discussion too, apparently. But uh, like watching this was just wow. You know, I was yeah. like, you could have been in that freaking rocket for like maybe uh, 10 to 20 minutes and then you it just landed right back so yeah it, it, it's gonna happen people are yeah. going to whatever place they want yeah. in would you do 10, it in 20 years would you or... do it Nathan? would you go to space and come back in 25 uh, minutes no freaking way if, if someone else uh, paid for 20 way, minutes in space mm, i don't know it's 20 minutes so i mean that's like i heard that if you want to go to mars it takes uh, seven months yeah so i mean being 20 minutes in space Okay, okay. I I would, like, honestly, I would consider that. <laughs> I've already felt like I was in space. I played Lone Echo. <laughs> okay. Uh... <laughs> but yeah, but you're right. That's what space it... is like, Mike. I'm not going. 
Yeah, but, but like you're right, Nathy. It, it was super fascinating to watch, yeah. and uh, it was really super pioneering cool. what they're doing. There were so many firsts, like world firsts, in that uh, launch. It was incredible. If you haven't checked it out, you can go and check it out on the SpaceX uh, YouTube channel. Uh, but yeah. we thought we would mention it because it was just a really cool thing to do. And obviously, you can check out the uh, the VR 360 video as yeah. well if you're that way inclined. So if yeah. you don't mind, I will tell you a few more facts in just less than five minutes. Yeah, yeah, about sure, go for the it. Roadster yeah. going to Mars. So first of all, yes, there is a dummy in there wearing the suit that uh, they might wear when they go to Mars. Uh, there was a tiny roadster on the dashboard with a Starman in there too. Um, That's awesome. They had a, uh, I don't know exactly how it's called, but a, a, a CD uh, in there too with information about our planet and about Earth and humans and stuff like that. That's awesome. So in case aliens find it uh, on the, uh, um, so in, inside like the, the computer part of like the Tesla Roadster, they uh, imprinted uh, uh, this, this has been made by humans or Earth or something. Yeah, proudly built That's by humans saw. on yeah, 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 Earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was good. Yeah, and last but not least, so uh, the car, under the car was like a, a plague where it was like standing on and all the names of all the employees from, uh, um, who worked on, on, on the rocket are on there. So, yeah. Nice. yeah. And awesome. also, it was playing uh, Space Oddity by uh, yeah. David Was he? Bowie. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fucking yeah. A, yes! Yeah. 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 In space. In space. In space. Apparently, uh, apparently, I've heard that that wouldn't actually work. Like, you wouldn't actually be able to hear it in space. But of course not. I was, there's, uh, there's, but there's a vacuum, like, so yeah. sound can't move there. Yeah, but now that we've plugged Tesla enough, I look forward to uh, receiving <laughs> my Tesla Roadster. <laughs> yes, <laughs> from Elon <laughs> Musk. <laughs> You know, we plugged your uh, your business mm. enough. Let's uh, let's get that stuff. You know. So, Mike, uh, we have an Elon in March, right? <laughs> yeah, Elon in March. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. On another little bit of tidbit of news uh, before we move on to our main topic is uh, Palmer Lucky now is a moderator on the Oculus subreddit, which is crazy. Like, I I I can't believe that's actually true. But uh, I don't think he'll actually be really yeah. hands-on there, but I just think no. he'll be there in the background. The, uh, the, the thing what I things. read about it was that uh, a moderator said that he won't have full mod rights. He can't like delete comments or like uh, do stuff like that. He, he will only be able to like add like flair to a comment or like, you know. Right. Uh, it, it, I think it's more like something like a, a little bit of like prestige. To it's an honorary thing, the, isn't it? It's, just, team, it's like an honorary so. it's know, like, token. It's like Snoop Dogg is like a moderator of uh, our trees. <laughs> Have Is you ever really? heard about that? Yeah, he's a moderator no, no, no. of, uh, of our trees. Trees. Oh, trees. You know, grass and trees. Yeah. And oh, God. Right. Mostly yeah, grass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm hoping now that Palmer there, at least some of my posts on there will get upvoted and not just burnt to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> well, our content, right? Yeah, exactly. The guy has no time to be on Reddit. Of course he was always on Reddit, we know that, because he, yeah. he, he's also a geek and a nerd like uh, everyone here. But yeah, yeah. in the end, he has no time to moderate. Come on, let's... I, like, this guy must be extremely busy with all kinds of projects, right? He, he was building things for the government or something. Mm. And I don't he also, know it also, it takes a long time to get into Spandex. Yeah, yeah. There is videos on there on the on, on the internet of him in They're spandex, scary. and it's funny because me and Zim actually met him at yeah. Oculus Connect Four uh, last year. Not in year. spandex. Uh, he wasn't in spandex then. He was wearing his uh, sort of signature Hawaiian shirt and shorts. Yeah. <laughs> but he was such a Flip cool flops. dude. Like he really he, he stood there like a little crowd gathered round. Everyone was really respectful, and he just took mm -hmm. questions and really gave but, thought out answers. He was just such the, a cool dude. The thing dude. is, and I think a lot of people still forget that he was a guy who was building headsets in his freaking garage that all of a mm -hmm. sudden like became like one of the yeah. most successful entrepreneurs probably in like uh, exactly, yeah. in like years. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. uh, but he still probably is that that kind of guy that like you know used to build stuff in his garage. I don't think he's changed that much. It's just he's no. got a lot more money and a lot more fame. Yeah, yeah. yeah the first true. time he got like a, a, a big amount of money, he bought a, a, a legit license for Windrar. And I'm not joking. <laughs> that's true. I saw an interview of Road to VR, and he said like, I, I that's that's what what he bought. Plus, he was also planning to buy a. A golden toilet with rockets on the sides. Now that never happened, but uh, who knows? I'm not joking. It's true. So I didn't make this up. It's more, like on an interview. More people should pay their license for Winra. <laughs> that is for I do. Sure. I do agree. I do agree. <laughs> yeah. He's very well spoken. Like I, I've, I've liked Palmer Lucky. I've been a Lucky fan for a long time. I've got him doubly on my back wall. Okay. I like. I like Lucky, despite of his like political views or whatever. That's all his own, right? Yeah. Whatever religion yeah. he wants, yeah. to do, whatever he wants to think, whoever he wants to fund. That's not up to me. What he did do was he planted a very important seed 
and it's why we're all here talking today. So yeah. exactly. No, I totally agree. I agree with that. So let's move on to today's first topic, and that is in death. So this recently re released in early access on Oculus and Steam VR. Uh, if you're interested in picking up this title, it is 19.99 in US dollars, uh, 14.99 in British pounds, uh, and it's the second title from the studio called Soulfar. They're uh, an Icelandic studio. Uh, their first game was um, Everest VR. I don't know if any of you guys ever played Everest VR. Rowdy, did you? And Nate, did. Oh, I did. did. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I heard it's pretty short, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, so most people didn't like it. That's what I do know, but yeah. I... Um, it was beautiful. It, it, looked, it, was beautiful. it looked really nice. Oh, yeah. yes. Oh, yes. And, and like, like being like on top of the Mount Everest, freaking awesome. Okay. okay. But I know you couldn't really do much. It was more like I'm just standing here and they just dragged me onto the mountain. And uh, I, yeah, I still whatever. remember what you, uh, what you said about it. You said it's, it basically feels like a 360 video with a very limited amount of, uh, of interaction. Right. That's, yeah, that's, no, that's what that, you that, said. That's yeah. it. Yeah, no, no, yeah. that's true. Well, I'm really keen well, on it though. Like I saw it launched and I'm a big fan of uh, Dean Hall uh, behind DayZ and all that franchise. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and a lot of his games and ideas, his concepts. Um, but he like he mounted Everest in the middle of the whole DayZ blow up. And I was like, damn, dude, because like, I'm a climber as well. And I love that kind of stuff. So I'm keen on actually going back and playing it. So I might try that out this week. I'll let you yeah. guys know what I think. Yeah, it's much safer too if you don't want there's, to. There's not a lot of climbing there. There's not a there's, you won't, you I mean, won't get what I, what I uh, still remember from that is that there's not a lot of climbing there. It's basically more like a point and click no. and going to the next. Uh, yeah, right. yeah it's climbing, not like you, you, you can't. It's not yeah. even. A, it's not really a game. You can't fail if you if you screw something up. Nothing happens. You know, it's it's really point to point, and uh, you just like do five like moves with your hands, and then you have done it all. But um, uh, like going to in death, I think that one is a step into the right direction. Uh, uh, maybe Everest wasn't that wow, but mm. in death is of course a whole different genre too. But uh, yeah. I, I think it's it's a lot better than Everest in a way. Yeah, like in death, there's a lot more game mechanics to it. You know, it's uh, and and similar to Everest, it's a very good looking game. Uh, you know, it's it's set in a real dark medieval kind of world that's kind of got a bit of a Dark Souls vibe to it. You know, it's kind of old cathedrals. Uh, it's procedurally generated, so it's like in the sky, so it's like a floating uh, castle area. And procedurally generated means that so every playthrough, the world will be built in slightly different way. Like, let's be honest about it, they're all going to be the same cathedrals, same assets, but just mm. put in a different order. So after a few playthroughs, yeah, you will have seen everything. But mm -hmm. it's, I kind of like this procedurally generated thing because it makes it a little yeah. bit different. But it is the same assets at the end of the day. So don't expect a completely yeah. different game every time you play it. The other yeah. interesting uh, thing about In Death is that it's a roguelite. So what that means is everything you collect during your playthrough uh, will be lost if you die. So you go through the game. You can collect a few different things like a different arrows for your bow because it is an archery game at heart. Yep. Yeah. So you've got arrows that can freeze mm -hmm. enemies, arrows that can set them on fire, and your traditional arrow. But also you've got money, which you can then spend on health, because uh, you'll lose that. Uh, it doesn't regenerate. You have to sort mm -hmm. of find health packs to, to boost your health back up again. The, um, the only but, yeah. problem I have with it a little bit, and it's like what, what Merp says in the chat as well, like I know that the bow and arrow, they feel great in, in that, but it gets boring really quick. No, Did you have right. that feeling as well? Yeah, totally. And and that was one of the things that I thought was was the sort of negative spin on the game. Like like the positives, yeah, it's gorgeous, it's procedurally generated, it's a roguelite, a little bit different from everything else that's out there. Kind of got an interesting uh, achievement mechanic as well. So when you die, you unlock achievements to mm. make the game a little bit different as well. So, mm. you know, it gives buffs to your bow or enemies, different enemies spawn. But the problems with this game is, like you say, it gets very repetitive quick um yeah. you know once you've played through it maybe and completed it a couple of times do you really want to go back and play it again probably not um but also there's no story uh mm. which is because at, at the end of the day you're in the afterlife right this like floating kingdom in the sky um yeah. but there's no explanation as to why you're there like so, why why you died and ended up in this kind of environment so uh, how and much nothing... do you pay for this title then well, this is the thing. It's an early access game, so you know, nineteen ninety nine in US dollars, fourteen ninety nine in British pounds is the price. But okay. you know, for me, 
I get why people put early access games out because it judges like whether it's going to be successful or not. And plus they can take community feedback and, you know, develop the game and make it what it should be. And and that's what certainly I hope they do with this title, because if they added a story which kept you coming back to try and uncover the secrets and the mysteries as to why you're there, yeah. then that would make it yeah. more interesting to keep playing it. But True. also like um, what I found is because it's a, an archery game, you're always fighting enemies at range. And what I wanted to do was get up close and personal and end up fighting these beasts with like a sword or a dagger or something. Not always, um, but you can try to fight at range. Yeah, um, like <laughs> y- 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 I, can... I, I played. I played games where you could just grab the arrow from your bow and just stab it into someone's face. Absolutely, yeah. Abs- I want that. Yeah, exactly. That. I know what you're saying, Mike. Yeah. I was just joking but... that sometimes they do get the jump on you. They really do. Quick, they do. In be- really quickly yeah. in between here, we got someone in the chat who said uh, that they got a, f- a Vive Focus, and uh, if there were people interested in knowing things, uh, they are testing it over the weekend. Um, so uh, that might be very interesting. Worth, what like, we want to uh, know is how they got one. Did they import one, or did they go to China and pick one up? <laughs> Who did you exactly. sleep with? Exactly. Yeah. I did see some messages today on Twitter of people talking about the Vive Focus, and uh, it's it's really easy to import it apparently. So there is not really an issue there in terms of like barter patrol or checks or anything like that. Uh, I will be getting one next week too. So I'm I'm also really curious. Uh, 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 what it's all about and how well it works and why mm. it's only getting sold in China, of course. That's also a good one. Mm. But uh, I see Svivira talking about this, like, uh, about the game. And he says, like, I agree, it needs to have a campaign, a, a story, gameplay, you know, a chapter yeah, thing. I, I like but, to see that But, like, too. looking at the game as it is right now, how it has been built, I don't think that can really happen anymore. Mm. Or it's just going to be some cheap voiceover, maybe. But then it should have been there from the start. I can do that. Uh, plus, I mean, I honestly, I have no problem with early access titles, but a developer needs to have a roadmap then to tell you, okay, this is the date where we are going to do this. This is what we are going to do next. But does this developer has a roadmap of this game? Yeah, I'm going to mm. chime in here, actually, because what I found was, having only played this game today, I played it for a bit over an hour, I think it's like, it's very much like if you were to blend Assassin's Creed with Dreadhalls and Painkiller. Like, Painkiller was this kind of dark uh, FPS shooter from, geez, donkeys years ago now. Assassin's Creed, everybody knows. And Dreadhalls is a procedurally generated dungeon horror experience that you can get on Gear, Rift, Five, etc. Um, I actually, so, although I think what you're saying, Mike, is what I would call a postage stamp storyboard. So what you want is something to kind of help you help fuel you along the journey by giving you these little tidbits that you unlock. So you kind of get a f- sense of like, there's a mm. purpose to all of this or what, who my character is like, you yeah. get that backbone. And I agree with you on that. I don't think a campaign works very well. Anyone who's played dread halls, for instance, they did that on the, on the full PC release. They, and I think it's not there on gear as well. They have a campaign and I'll tell you, it's the most throwaway experience because they tried to shoehorn a story into a game that's, procedural and it just doesn't work at all they, no, there's text yeah. and don't do that anymore you, you just can't you can't do that so no. to, to, to what Nathie's saying i think there's a way to do it but the way you do it is like something that you find like a clue or a secret yeah it's kind of like something that you unlock but i found actually i didn't find the the arrow based combat boring i i do think that they need to you know have an array of a more some more weapons it could be just three mm. it could be like mm. some melee something ranged but i like the fact that the enemies do try to come after you they do they are a little bit smart and the way the level builds when you first open and all the blocks kind of float up and the whole level creates itself and it is quite different from the beginning every time i i do want to go deeper i want to see how far i can get mm. on this it i like hardcore the ai games. isn't that smart if you if you are not even around the corner yet they already recognize you're there mm. so like like from my perspective i i wouldn't get this title i would just wait until they really show off more Always. content yeah. but for like it depends like for me, it's very important to have a story bound to a game and also one that is legit, not just some voiceover, something cheap thrown in there, but something that makes sense, that uh, uh, matches, that syncs up nicely with the game, that makes it a smooth experience. I don't yeah. don't feel they can do that anymore with this one. They should have done it from the start. It sits in a you category. Throw it in now, then... Yeah. Sorry, I was going to had... say, this sits in a category like Space Pirate Trainer. Like, I'd say that mm-hmm. Space Pirate Trainer is an arcade game where you're scoreboarding, yeah. and you're saying, I want to get higher on the scoreboard. That kind of game is not for me, and I know that, and I will always be hard on those kinds of games. A game like this, like a roguelike procedural game, I tend to like them, but I just like yeah. that kind of uphill battle, and that's me personally. Not everyone likes that. So a story for me is less of an issue here, um, but I do think that... 
the issue I'm, I'm seeing is the sameness of the enemies you are encountering because I've seen basically three mm. types and I'm yeah. hoping that changes quickly. It does. If you're repeating, does. If you're repeating that intro yeah. segment so many times, you know, yeah. you can get bored of that. Like, so it does, Mike. You, yeah. you, you do, yeah. You do encounter other enemies and like a difficult, uh, harder enemies of the same genre. So like you get a, a, mm. a bowman that's more difficult. He's buffed yeah. up. He looks a little bit different. Oh, it's okay. like um, we yeah. say on, on, yeah. on basically every stream. It's like we need, we need like a push forward. Like, you know, something that wants us to continue that's playing. It. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. that doesn't need to be a story. I mean, I like a story, Nate like the story, but if, if the game is interesting enough by itself without a storyline, then that's fine as well. But if it's mm -hmm. just a repetition of what you've been playing like before, and it goes on assets, hours and hours right? and end. Because you nah, could like, say, say there was a whole thing there where you like, you unlock past the crypt or whatever you're in, and then you go into like a church. I mean, you start in a cathedral, right? So say then you go to like a crypt or a different area. So you're almost like going up a tier, but you, it's uh, almost like something like Binding of Isaac or something like that. You kind of do. Yeah. Um, all right, all right, Mike. Say nothing more. Say nothing yeah. more. You'll spoil it. Yeah, because right, I, 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 I've actually encountered the boss. Uh, uh, you know, the boss fight. Because um, there's like essentially three stages in the boss fight. That's kind of even though it's procedural, that's the layout mm -hmm. that you get. Yeah. And you get opportunities yeah. to buy upgrades and weapons in the meantime of those stages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can you can uh, have some melee combat in that you can use the shield to bat enemies away. Uh, but it doesn't feel satisfying enough. It needs to be like a, a knife or a sword or something like that, I feel, in my mind. Um, mm -hmm. but or, or box them, you know, that would be kind of fun as well. We have to mention one thing, which I found to be really awesome, and I haven't seen in any VR game yet, is the what I'll call the grenade toss mechanic for teleportation, where you have yes. a little shard in your hand, and you just give yes. it a toss. And it means yes. that mm -hmm. you can either fire, basically you can draw and fire a relocate arrow, yep. or mm -hmm. if, just really fast, if you're like surprised by something, you can just like do that and just like, toss this shard yeah. that you have in your hand to the side so you can throw it quite far or you can yeah. throw mm -hmm. it really closely and it means you can mm -hmm. teleport fast and i like the fact that they integrated what i call the dash teleport as opposed yeah. to just the blink teleport i've said that yeah. before it works way better yeah, yeah. but so also like, like uh, just 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 quickly like uh with the story because in death is you, you've died right and you've ended up in this place like what a great base to have a cool story mm. like you could yeah. have experienced the death do you know what i mean and that would have been a, a like a really impactful start mm. of the game like uh, th that's what i said in my review as, as well i said like have i just been like hit by a bus or did i just die of old age like it, it's <laughs> not explained do you know what i mean yeah. but it would mm. have been a cool intro to the game that you actually get to experience death and then you're yeah. in the afterlife fighting these demons yeah, that's true so in the chat mr 86 says i don't think every game needs a story especially generative games I, I agree, but I, I do want to meet uh, uh, something in, in the game, you know, and if that's someone that talks to me like, hey, uh, you are doing very well, or something is telling me like, okay, uh, Nathy, uh, you're this far, or something that, that just interacts with you along the way, but if it's only you walking around with the arrows and shooting them a bit, and I don't really see anyone else in the game that might want to trade like some stuff with me, no. maybe because you're but collecting it, things too. It, you could it, make like a little trading system in there. It, it doesn't know. even need to be that complex, I think. I mean, I think, no. for example, because I always use uh, the example of Star Shelter, which is also built by a small dev team. Yep. It's yeah. also basically procedural generated stuff that is happening. I mean, you have like points of, of interest that are that are that are occurring, but like all the material that is floating by is basically um, uh, procedural generated. But you have that concept of saying, you know, you need to survive. And that is where the game is built around. And that is the thing that pushes you forward and wants you to continue. And I think that is important in a game indeed. Like the, the storyline is, is, is second to that. I think it's the, the, the core concept needs to be interesting enough for you to continue playing because otherwise mm. you get bored after like 15 minutes i gotta yeah. thank him though because there's the, the you know we early on after the lab there were a whole bunch of clone uh bow shooter games i mean yeah there was a ton of them this isn't that and i i'm thankful for it because going in i was yeah. like ah this is just gonna be a clone but they've actually done a few things game design wise that mm. are admirable. i've heard that multiple times already that people say like the bow mechanics are yeah. uh, are really nice yeah, and they are. And the thing is as well, like it is still early access. So if the developers are listening to the community feedback about these kind of points we're making, because most of the feedback uh, they're getting is is what we're saying essentially, uh, then they maybe they've got they've got an opportunity to to add add some bits to the game to make it a bit more yeah. of a full package. That's what I would say. Because right now that, I think it's yeah. it's a bit of a one trick pony. That's what I would say. That, that's that's the hard part. Like that's that's the only thing I do not like about early access. You have no idea why 
the developer decided to go for early access. Maybe they want to work on this game for six more months and then they will go to their next project. Maybe they, they want to like proceed for like a year or maybe even longer. That's the thing you don't know. Like they already know how long they are going to work on this game. So a few of those things we want or the community wants is not going to happen because they don't have enough time because they already have plans for let's say um, uh, the Mount Everest 2.0 uh, game or maybe something totally different. You know what I mean? It seems as well, like early access seems like a bit of a, a cop out yeah, sometimes for it's I'm just going to release a, a half baked game. You know, it's, it's like, very, oh, okay. it's very tricky. I like in my reviews, I always say if you want to get this early access title and you really think it's interesting, then see it as an investment. Yeah. Uh, you know, you give the developer some money to uh, proceed uh, building the game exactly. and, and, and push it forward. But I'm also like, you know, if, if there is a game out there similar to this one that is not early access, then buy that one instead, you know, because I yeah. it's a full game, so you get, you know what you get, that's it. And with early access, it's a gamble. You're gambling with your money. Also, what you, you buy into, I, I agree with your point about the investment, because you're like, you know, it might it might not pan out, but also your game might transform. I mean, does anyone know like Rust yeah, well, started off as a totally different game? Yeah. Sonic so, so was as well. a procedural yeah. game at yeah, the start. Yeah. That was their idea. They're like, oh, we'll just make it quickly arranged like this. Then we're going to make it procedural, and we're going to make it this kind of game. And they went a totally different track because of the feedback with the community. Yeah. Without early access investments, uh, some games are not going anywhere. So uh, I think we should be happy that some people are investing and are believing in a developer to uh, make it better. But there is nothing wrong with waiting uh, to see how a developer uh, uh, um, well updates the game, you know. And mm. with this one, I, I would just wait and see what they do, you know, with all this feedback, and yeah. uh, then maybe buy it. Yeah. yeah, definitely. In my opinion right now, you've probably got an hour's worth of like solid gameplay and then you're going to have seen everything or got a little bit... You're going to get a bit bored of the, the repetitive mm -hmm. nature of the gameplay, I think, yeah. in my opinion, anyway. Yeah, that's fair. Um, yeah. So moving on to our next topic, which is V-Real. And this is going to be an interesting one because it's going to change the game potentially for people like us that create content on YouTube or on Twitch. Uh, essentially, uh, V-Real is a Seattle-based startup company. They raised $11.7 million in funding for this VR broadcasting Impressive. platform. And uh, if you can imagine this in your mind, it's like a platform like Twitch or YouTube but just for VR content creators. So on those platforms right now, we're kind of a very small minority, but then we might have our own platform in the future, which will be super interesting. And what this actually does is, if you can imagine you watch, you know, if you watch YouTube or, or Twitch of us, you know, creating gameplay videos or wherever it may be, you're essentially watching just a 2D screen of us playing a VR game. But what this allows you to do is, if you own a VR headset at home, then you can put that on and join us in the VR world, not necessarily play with us, but you can w either watch uh, a pre-recorded session that we had and follow us around and listen to our thoughts where we're talking. And you can uh. interact as well if it's live. So say uh, Zim, for example, wants to do this live, he could jump into a game. And then uh, as the viewers, they could jump in with him. Yeah. And uh, there's limited sort of interaction between the two right now, because I think it would be quite distracting as a, as a streamer to see all these people like bombarding you with like information. But they can do like simple cough, emotes. Cough, old space <laughs> VR, been there, done that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so right now there's simple emotes. Like, you know, you can send a like or a heart or a thumbs up or whatever it may be. Um, but you can actually be in the game world with the person that's creating the content. So that's kind of interesting. Right now that there's only a few titles that support this, so uh, the first ones are going to be like Gorn, Arizona Sunshine, uh, Surgeon Simulator and Superhot. But what that means is that when this is f finally released, it's still in development right now, that I can sort of do a video of my playthrough of Superhot, for example, but you can also jump into that that world and see from different angles. You can, you can freely walk around that world as well. That's the most impressive part. Yeah, walk around my actual gameplay and see me shooting at different angles. So that's that's really interesting. Um, like I say, it's still early days, but if you want to apply for this, uh, you know, if you're a VR content creator yourself, you can apply on their website, which is vreal.com. Mm. Uh, and uh, the the company is sort of like really sort of using this investment to make sure that the platform is polished, that it is a good enough competitor for Twitch and YouTube for VR content creators in the future. Mm. But uh, I'd be interested to know what you uh, you guys think of this one. Obviously, being fellow content creators. I take a deep breath anytime we talk V-Real because the technology, it's a bit, it's a bit like, it's a bit like the early days of VR when people were introducing the concept and saying, 
but your game's going to have to be built from the ground up for VR. Like, you right. can't just bolt it onto something you've got. I can't just go play GTA V in VR, native VR, I mean. So the number one hurdle, I like the concept of, the, of what it does. It presents a couple of content creator challenges. Because if you think about it, one of the things that this is, this is also for cin- cin- cinematographers are thinking, like one of the things that um, J.J. Abrams, I think, commented, he said, like, if we do, if we do a VR, do VR cinema, like something like Lucky's Tale, not Lucky's Tale, sorry, what am I thinking? The Hedgehog one. Henry. 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 So if we have something like Henry, I can't control what that person is seeing when they're seeing it. Something might happen and they weren't even looking at the scene, you know? So. Yeah. There is definitely a part of this which is saying you're having a less of a curated experience and you'll also have an experience that's a little bit different to other people. Like, instead, someone might say, oh, were you in the crowd on the left side when he threw that T-shirt? You know, it's like being in a real live audience. It's a bit Mm. different. You'll have a different perspective, a different view. That means you can share, but also you're missing out on, I didn't see the same thing. So it's a little bit different than, did you see that, you know, episode last night of Game of Thrones? You know, because I saw exactly what Mike saw which is right, different right. if you're looking at it from a different direction. But I think the main, the main issue but with that, the that technology could be an is it's got to be built as well, I think. That's, and I'm wondering what that's going to do. How are they going to mm, uh, that... overcome that? They've said API. In the summer, they said they're building an intelligent API, something what, like what Twitch has done uh, with inter- interaction with chat. They built this API and allows people to kind of, you can click on a scene, kind of like what uh, YouTube's done with their uh, annotations, um, where you can actually interact kind of physically with the frame of the video. Right. So it'll be interesting to see what what people do with this. I mean, you guys as YouTubers, what do you what do you think? Well, I, I think I think it's also like it could be an attraction point uh, that it's like it's something different from what, for example, Twitch is doing or for what YouTube is doing. Yeah. It it could be that you know that something like this is maybe the ideal platform for VR because I mean. VR is also different in so many ways that you that you re- record content. I mean, uh, you have the head bobbin. Uh, you have like it, it. It can be much more difficult to watch at VR content uh, on a YouTube video just because like you know your head is constantly moving when you're walking around, and it can be like a little bit more distorting because even when you're breathing, like you know the the headset yeah. is moving. Uh, yeah. So yeah. for that kind of thing, maybe a platform like this might be more ideal. Is it going to be um, a platform or is actually... it just the software integration technology? Because that's what I'm not clear on. Because I know about the software piece, which is saying, okay, I can put cameras in the scene. Okay, I can have my audience with me. No, is, it's it, a is it also, are they going for platform? They're going to yeah, it, it, it has to be because you can't you can't uh, consume this content anyway, uh, anywhere else. You can't like consume this on YouTube because they don't allow you to be in that environment. Whereas this is the platform that says you are in the environment with the person that's streaming it or creating the content. Um, they've got funding. a few tools. They've got a few tools. So there's, there's uh, native VR, so you can share your VR experiences in VR. So you can do a, a recording essentially and then share that and they can do it mm-hmm. after the fact. Uh, to, be, to be honest, I don't, I don't think that the platform will stay and exist, but if it gets enough traction, I think a, another player could pick it up other than YouTube, maybe uh, like Facebook or yeah, like somewhat, something like exactly. that. Yeah, exactly. That's that what wants, I'm thinking. That is very, very focused on 3D content that wants mm. Oculus, that wants uh, VR content on there, that already has 360 implementation, yeah. that is going to pick something like this up and implement yeah. it in their platform as a yeah. competition a for, for yeah. YouTube yeah. and Twitch. I, I do agree with Rowdy. It's like an in-depth live stream. So it's, it's uh, easier to watch. It's more interactive maybe. But the issue is at this moment, um, most people do not own a VR headset that watch YouTubers. So let's say if I would use this platform now, I'm leaving a lot of my viewers out. So they will not get the same experience as people that are with me in VR. So uh, how well does this platform perform as a pancake version on screen? Mm. That's what I'm like wondering then. Yeah, Yeah, it's important. Like you say, there's not that many people that own VR headsets, you know, that watch VR content creators. It needs careers. to work both yeah. ways because I, I want to cater the, yeah. the people that do own a VR headset. It, it would be the same like if I would go uh, side by side now on, on this podcast, then people uh, will be able to watch it. But it's going to be a small portion of mm. people that are it feels able very... to do that. And yeah. it doesn't work both ways. So that's but... what I'm like. I like this idea. I, I yeah. want my, my audience to be with me in a game. But then uh, the people that do not own a VR headset, that, that's still like the, the biggest part of my audience that are, is like interested in buying a headset or wants to know more about VR, but they can't 
get the same thing. So is it that is not still implemented? Askew? That will not be implemented. Are we sure about that? Or I that don't know about be? that. Because I'm, it's I'm, basically that's, that's... if you have a, a 360 uh, kind of view, just like YouTube does, or just like no, Facebook no, does. Then, no, it's different because then, you can move around the environment. You're not. It's not just. A 360. You can actually also physically move. move yeah, that's, that's the backwards. cool thing. So say you're like yeah. in super hot and you're shooting here. Well, you could pause that freeze frame and physically move around that individual and see them from every single angle. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a big chicken and egg right now. It is. It, it is. is. No, I and totally it feels, agree. It feels to me a little bit like where 3D TV and stereoscopic cinema was five, ten years ago. Yeah. Where it's like you didn't have something to really sell or drive people there. And then Avatar hit and it was like, okay, it got a nice wave of attention. Yeah. I think we do need to get there, but I think yeah. I, don't, I think Rowdy and Nathy, one of you made the point, it needs a buyer. Someone needs to snap this up who's a major player, like top four, top five, to mm, absolutely integrate happen. it. It needs to be the same kind of thing like what Apple's mm. just done with the, you know, 3.5 mil jack on iPhones. And basically yeah. someone just say, you know what, guys, if you want to go forward with us, you're going to have to use this. Mm. It, it needs that. And I think... Right now, it's probably strong point, I would think, is actually not in live content as much as it is in, I want to experience the thing that guy experienced in VR after the fact and just like look around the environment. Like even I would like to re-experience something I'd already experienced and look behind me or look somewhere else. Like, because there's so many different angles. Why can't I record? That's where I'd want to do it. I'd want to record something in a VR recording where then I can kind of play it back how I like and maybe even as a content Mm -hmm. creator, shape my broadcast to Rowdy's point, instead of shaky head through the broadcast, you might want to create a really cool like pan through the scene or whatever and something yeah. that you're doing. Exactly, and you could totally do that. Like uh, th- this is a, a comment from Todd uh, Hooper, the founder and CEO of VReal. He says mm. VR is an immersive medium, and VReal is the only way for viewers to step inside someone else's VR gameplay and enjoy VR content the way it's meant to be experienced. Uh, immersive virtual worlds are the, are the future of gaming, and we're building the highway that will take viewers to created gameplay experiences alongside their friends and favorite gaming personalities. And I think that's that's a key point in his in his uh, comment. There is that he's building the highway, like he's seeing the future of where this is going, and he wants to start building this platform so it's ready for when yeah it does. Yeah. Take I kind of wondering though how how well it will work with like more heavy kind of games because. That must require like um, an immense amount of rendering power, like just to get like that scene yeah. entirely built up. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, because yeah. up to this date, a PC game you can't do a 360 degree shutter. I mean, without uh, uh, taking like a shot forward, a shot right, a shot sure. backwards. It's like it's you like make what we mentioned. Video, uh, I think on uh, last epi- episode or the episode before that, yeah, where you were saying about the car being rendered in front of you, Zim. Yeah, know, exactly. In, in, in in dirt rally or whatever, the car in front of you and the scenery is <laughs> is fully rendered. If you look behind you, there isn't a back of the car. Doesn't exist. Yeah. So uh, that's going to be a problem. Recently, Mike, we were just having a race yesterday. It was like, well, that's why they haven't implemented like multiplayer races because you'd see half a half-assed car in front of you. <laughs> you wouldn't see the whole car model at all. They never <laughs> paid for that, and so that like they must be kicking themselves, going, ah, guys, we should yeah. have done it from the start. But you make a great point, Rowdy, because you'd have to render the whole scene in order to yeah. for everyone to get the beast that they need to see or you need to do some kind of pixel piping to pump that over the network traffic back to the person's rig and do it there i mean like the engineering behind this is first difficult and yeah. my question i want to put a question to all you guys because this is the hard question what would it take to entice you to use something like be real what what would be the thing that jumps at you that says this would get me onto that platform you need an audience you know, if, if yeah, the audience this, isn't there... I just wanted then, to say then, that. Um, yeah. it's, it's maybe That's too again the chicken and the egg. Uh, you only yeah. get an audience if there's enough creators on there. Yeah. Um, also, but, yeah. But the thing is, like you, you mentioned about the rendering power, like the titles that they've announced that they're working with already, like Gorn, Arizona Sunshine, Surgeon Simulator, and yeah. Superhot, they're not exactly the most uh, graphically intensive uh, games. Arizona? It... it, mm. it it has been like for real has been uh, around for a long time and uh um i i remember them doing a panel uh, together with uh, kids and jerry but uh i i did I, I was in the chat back then i was asking them some stuff and they were like kind of trying to answer my hard questions but you know the the thing is like i have the feeling they still didn't completely figure it out what they want to do with it it hasn't been really like out to the public yet we still don't really know what this is 
I never got the opportunity to try it. So if they they watch this this podcast, then we are of course interested to give it a try. Maybe even uh, uh, let's say Rowdy would stream, and we would just go in there and see how that works. Hmm. But you know, I I don't really know what this is. I I've seen the videos. I've I've also uh, 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 like I, they sent me a couple of emails about it, trying to explain it, but. I have the feeling we need to experience this and mm. then and then talk about it again and see yeah. uh, why there's so much interest in this at the moment. But I do agree. I think like this could uh, blend in with, for example, Facebook Spaces or something else, mm. you know, and make it more interactive. I, I don't know if it would work right now because the, the, the audiences are too small. Yeah, you well, know, I would well, love to well, use this well. if everyone is watching on my channel in VR and it's like, yeah, man, come on, let's all join in in my game and yeah. it's epic. But at the moment, it's gonna be like, yeah, we got like like a hundred people watching and only like two people can really like join me but there so, but you say know? if like you pre-recorded it and they could watch it back like through that application they could watch your stream back so they like have a list of streams like oh here's Nathie's stream of Gorn for example mm. but what you can also do is you can set up multiple cameras uh, virtual cameras in your scene so I have a camera here that I do my intro with and then it jumps to this one yeah. and, then, and then you yeah, can yeah but that's the thing I'm more interested in this platform as a as a streaming platform right. not as a recording platform right. I <laughs> the way I record my videos now is still the way it, it matches the best, I think. Mm. Uh, this could uh, be the future, indeed. I love this. But... I love this, Nathie, because <laughs> we, 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 we see the opposites. I'm like, it's good for recording. I'll just shove it over there. And you're okay, like, yeah. oh, it's good for yeah, streaming. No. I'll shove it over no, there. It's, like it feels the... like this This platform feels like I'm doing a, a mixed reality stream from time to time, where mm. you see me wearing that Garn outfit. Yeah. And, and like, it, it's fun. But it's not for all, like for every day. So let's let's throw this for out now to obviously the most important people, <laughs> and that is the audience, yeah. because they're the ones who are going to be watching it. So let us know. Oh, I thought you were going to say to me. I thought because I have an I have an opinion. <laughs> go I wanted on, to bro, say. Go, go, go. <laughs> go on, Rowdy. Yeah. While, while no, the real the important is... people uh, ask a question, <laughs> you can tell us your <laughs> thoughts. <laughs> I I would like to use it for recording. I definitely yeah. would. I, but there are two things that I would still like for that. That is, a, is a cardboard integration already? For cardboard? people with a cardboard that's a, that's headset? That's a good question. I don't know. Because that, Sorry, that, that would be a huge thing. If I could, like, with yeah. YouTube, you have, like, that little cardboard symbol that you can press, and then you just need to put your cardboard mm. on, and mm. bam, you're, uh, you're using it. If they have mm. that kind of integration with cardboard, that would be a huge plus for me. And second, I don't want to be... The people will be moving in my scene. I want to be able myself to say, like, you know, this is going to be the camera point, uh, and I would use it only for recorded videos, not for live streams. That yeah. I say... Uh, I I I, I want to like that. Much like uh, how is that one game called again? With uh, which Josh Dobbs played a lot um, with the, with the Twinkie and the uh, how's it called? Oh, Mind again? Show. Yeah, Mind Show. That kind of experience where you record a scene, a setting uh, in game with a fixed camera, in which you determine what the viewer uh, uh, sees, but he sees it in the three sixty degrees. Yeah, but you set that up your would, scene. Uh, you have your cameras. You're able to compose. If, yeah, it gives yeah. you, as a videographer, the tools to show your game in a way that someone else yeah, isn't doing it. Nice. Yeah. Show off your editing and, and scene array skills. I mean, it's and yeah. think about it. Like, you could have a camera attached to the, the side of a bayonet as you're stabbing a German, you know? <laughs> yeah. Just you know, in World War II game. <laughs> but one but like, thing that already you comes really to do mind... Some of, like, awesome stuff like that. I have nothing against Germans, just to put that out there. Yeah. <laughs> well, one thing that came to mind immediately when I heard about this was that, uh, that scene uh, where you're, like, sitting in, like, the chair and that guy comes like and walks around you and like it's like uh, telling uh, you like he's gonna kill you and this and yeah. that kind of stuff and it, you know he's walking around you that would be so cool if you could like record that in 360 degrees and people could like look themselves how, again, how that would work that this is the issue this is the issue of the half car like developers didn't render the dude who was behind you because no one was gonna see him Th yeah. this puts so much but more that's a on... vr experience huh? you know what i mean say again mm. That, that was a VR experience, the one that I mentioned. Are you not talking about the one that was, um, wasn't it Kitchen, the Kitchen demo on PSVR? Uh, no. Okay, because that was very it's, similar. Uh, you're strapped one in a chair. Those, uh, in the end, goes in the end he's and... right. Like, almost everything is 360. I, I haven't played any VR where it's like, okay, there's nothing there anymore, you know. <laughs> um, but uh, it sounds like we got some some great advice going on. So, yeah. Uh, mm. Vareel, if you, if you want us to come over, we can... Uh, <laughs> 
you know yeah anything anything from the chat are they uh, are yeah, they pro see. or are they against uh, this kind of <laughs> a guard tournament with the ability to spectate as a big hat would be amazing <laughs> exactly. I would that's, love that's it would we, we'll all go in there and fight horn. to the death yeah yeah that would be cool what about I would watch it but the audience is too small that's what the, the Swiss uh, 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 guy says mm -hmm. um, uh, Clan says I think it would depend uh, on the game as the best use for recording or streaming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that's also right. Yeah. Okay. But there's a okay. point, just the final point I wanted to make here was Mike, what was that number again? What was the funding number? I think it was something like 120 million. 11.7 uh, million. 11.7 <laughs> Factor million. Factor 10 less. I still think it sounds like a big number. I don't think that's even close to what they need to make this work. Um, mm. But you can be sure that they know inside where that money's going and where, what their target is. So. Yeah, I think they're I'd a small say, team I'd right say, now. I think they're like sub Give a people. million of that to PewDiePie and make him record some stuff in Vireo, and there will be a ton of people who will jump on that platform. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> or let's say Vireo works together with the guys from VRChat and they make this work in a game like VRChat and the other ones like Onward, oh, Rec my. Room, uh, all the, the popular multiplayer uh, 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 titles, yeah. then, you know, then the advertisement is there. But at the moment, I, I don't feel like they, they really want to advertise this that much. They yeah. did ask some small creators to show it off. Um, but that's about it. So I don't feel like it's really out in the open yet. As no. I said before, they are doing this for We're years now. So it. yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's been out there. Definitely, years. definitely still working on it. Um, but we shall see. And you know, ne you never know. We might get to check it out uh, and and see I what it's so. all about firsthand. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, so uh, moving on to uh, motion simulators. Obviously, last episode, Rowdy was in a VR arcade and got to try out a lot of VR motion simulators. So I'll be interested to hear your thoughts on this topic. Um, but there is a company called Yaw, spelled uh, Y-A-W, Yaw. Uh, they have a Kickstarter campaign at the moment, and they're claiming to be the world's most compact and affordable uh, VR motion simulator. So it's a three degrees of freedom motion simulator using a spherical dome design that allows you for a 360 uh, movement and 50 degrees across the horizontal axis. So what that means is you, to describe it to our audio listeners in my kind of rudimentary senses that you're sitting in- They are seeing it as well. Oh, the audio. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. You're, sitting, you're sitting in an egg cup, <laughs> essentially, on a platform with three rollers that are rolling the egg cup in different directions that correlate with the movement in the game. That's kind of my rough <laughs> uh, description of what it's like. Um, but it's currently available on Kickstarter. It's got 14 days to go. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I've seen, seen the video. You've seen the video. I'm just going to subtitle this. this. If you ever want to get laid, don't let your girl <laughs> see it in this thing. All right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So uh, the the total pledge that you know their their pledge goal was a uh, hundred and eight thousand uh, pounds. They've actually just passed that. They're on a hundred and eighteen thousand pounds now pledged. So they've actually hit their goal. So this is actually going to be a thing, which is cool. Uh, there's fourteen days left. Like I say, if you want to jump in on this, uh, you can pick one up. You know, if you're a motion simulator guy, like if you play like Eve Valkyrie or some of the racing simulators, you might be digging this. Uh, I'd be interested to know your thoughts. Zim, you're a big uh, racer. Yeah, uh, look, everything that I've already said, right, it makes it look like a tool. I mean, it fucking makes it look like a tool. But would I try it? I fucking would try it. Because yeah. the things I like about it, it looks like it would work in a small environment. I wonder yeah. what their minimum, what their min spec is for the room. Because it looks like it would just about work here, um, mm. which would be good. Would I buy, like, how? where would you store a giant egg like that? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, world's biggest Easter egg hunt. But well, it, it could you be say good. that. If you've, if you've ever, if you've ever, um, I just did it coming down on some really uh, Humpty Dumpty roads in Scotland. If you've ever felt what, like, even a 15, 12, whatever degree incline is on the downside, it's a real big difference. So I'd love to try this with a Seto. I really, yeah. I really would. And actually, yeah. Rowdy, what did you, what did you have? I mean, what did you try out kind of last weekend? Was it anything like this? <laughs> uh, no, the, the movements were like way, way, way because this like kind of simulates I think more like the uh, the movements of the of the thing that you're in. While the thing that I tried was actually trying to simulate the g forces that those drivers were feeling. So the amount of inclination that you have and the amount of rotation, the speed that you have was way, way higher. For example, when you went to a turn. Uh, you, you know, in, in the car, like if you're driving fast, you, you go a little bit there. That thing would literally like 
throw you all the way to the side. And, and because you're wearing VR glasses, you don't realize that, that that is happening. But all the people around you see that, of course. <laughs> but you really feel like, oh, man, this is a sharp turn here. It's a sharp turn. So it simulates basically the G-forces that your bodies are, nice. are experiencing mm. uh, right. in, in contrast to like the real movements of the car. Like right, them. right. Yeah. Because like, right, okay. right now, this is uh, in terms of like a motion simulator, it's not actually that expensive, I don't think. It's uh, $1,190. Uh, this is kind of what you can buy right now. So it works out to about, about £860. Uh, if you pledge that right now, you can have uh, a custom color on the shell. You can have your name on it. You can have an embroidered <laughs> name on the seat. Uh, they're the kind of like additions you can get to it right now. Okay, can um, you repeat that price again? How much? One, one. So, one thousand one hundred and ninety dollars, or eight hundred and sixty pounds. Yeah. Twelve hundred bucks. That, that's that's Ooh. what you're pledging right now. Ooh. But um, the thing, but, but the the main, my main concern the... with this is, is it's not gonna feel right. Right. <laughs> I, I really think, you know, you're gonna wear that headset, and the movements that you're feeling are not gonna be. You know, it's going to make the movements that the car is, is making, or like uh, the the vehicle, that, but it's not, not going physics. to it's not going to feel like like that. And that no. is the big thing that one, with one of those. You don't have to get perfect, animators. right? You don't have no. to get perfect. I mean, I think the same thing for me. You guys know I'm a big tactile guy, so like tactile transducers is a big deal for me. Mm. It doesn't so have to be perfect. To the thing that I would say is going to stand out the most to me in this, if I was using it, is any discernible latency in the effect. No. You know, like, oh, yeah. I go downhill mm. and now it, it just shifted. Because actually getting that mechanism, the gearing and all that to work, is number one. The mm. second thing is going to be noise. If I'm hearing gearing, because, you know, can't hear it, but a lot of these things are feckin' noisy when they first yeah. come off the line. Mm. They did actually address that in the video, and they say it's practically silent. Yeah, they so, okay. said that about the first uh, force-back steering wheels, which were like... <laughs> but hey, 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 hey. On, on the positive side, you could get this and then play that ready player one experience and be an easter egg <laughs> and be driving an your little yeah. easter egg through the experience plus well, let's say you cool. do this like in, in let, let's let's say you're you're driving and you're drifting <laughs> and you're like doing this with like four people next to each other that would be so funny yeah, seriously okay. i like i like it's the cool concept though, it's really to see cute this kind of, it's really uh, cute stuff being developed okay. by vr doll yeah i mean yeah, it's, also it's someone neat. in the also, someone in the chat says, uh, uh, his name is Absol, he says, it's like a walk man. <laughs> it a is like man. a walk. You can do your stir fry in it and hop in it afterwards. You know what? Make some noodles in there. Yeah. The, the, the picture it's... you painted in my head, Nathie, of like four dudes like sitting in these pods. Yeah. And then also, you guys know like the, the hand experience, like with those like tendrils coming off. Can you imagine like a neighbor uh -huh. who knows nothing of VR walks in. You're all in these pods with the <laughs> <laughs> And then throwing bananas and stuffing you got the trackers on your your hands mario kart yeah, get uh, it. no but i think like like as a, as a multiplayer thingy and you have like some fun experiences that are made for this device this contraption then uh that, that could work really well you know but again as rowdy said if it's just going to simulate something and it's not really accurate then it doesn't feel right you know it's more like yeah. like just some random thing that moves around you're like oh i'm almost going to fall out of this this act well, thing. Rowdy said that his uh, concern was where to store it, but it, it does actually, you can take the, the egg cup part off, you can fold in the rollers and then fold it back on itself. So it does actually compact to a smaller size and then you can tuck that away. Um, if, but, if you tuck something <laughs> away, you won't be using it anymore. Exactly, that's yeah, the thing. That's... The thing I, I find with it is if you have a dome shape on the top, you can't stack anything on it. So, yeah. so you could use it as a coffee table or something. No, this is a problem no. I've had with if yeah. anytime you get an object, which is just like a, a rounded <laughs> top or whatever, like where are you putting that? You don't tuck mm. it under your sofa, you don't tuck it behind yourself. Like where is it going? From you can still <laughs> use it in the kitchen. The, maybe the you could hang it up. If you could hang it up, then maybe. <laughs> oh, right? that's, you could put it on a okay. wall somewhere, it looks like some weird funky artwork. Yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. the chat so, is uh, saying uh, if you don't like it at least you can cook something in it <laughs> yeah, yeah. but, but if, lot, imagine though. imagine imagine uh, uh, Mike getting this and he's sitting in there then it's like an egg sitting in an egg <laughs> <laughs> egg like exception exception exception, exception. exception. <laughs> So, oh, wow. uh, so just some more details about this. Obviously, uh, the <laughs> developers say that you can mount uh, steering wheels, pedals to it, shift the mounts, all that kind of stuff. But it's also compatible with SimTools software, uh, and therefore, like a huge oh. library pre-exists, so like, for, like simulators, cool, space That's simulators, cars. Yeah. Um, 
But from what I saw in the video where they used the HTC Vive with it, it seemed like the uh, movement was like way too exaggerated. And like you said, uh, Zim, I think you only need a little bit of movement to add to the immersion. No, 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 no. No, no that, that, is, that, is the, that is exactly the opposite. You need far more because you need to yeah. simulate uh, an experience of falling over or an experience of like going down. Because that's also the thing I said about those motion simulators that I tried. Mm. You're not simulating the movements of the car, but you're right. trying to simulate the, the, the movement that you're feeling. So you need to ah, get that feeling of, of inclination. System. So yeah. would that be yeah. why they're overcompensating with the movement? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they should right. overcompensate with the movement. They should, right. uh, yeah, should right. do it as much as possible. In interesting. That uh, makes more uh, sense then. Comment from the chat, sorry. Uh, uh, Mr. 86 says, I'm confused how it would work with inclines, etc. If I raise up a hill in VR, is this thing going to tilt me back and yeah. make my look at the ceiling of my car? Yeah, essentially, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, I, so yeah. you're, remember, your headset. Oh. Yeah, it, yeah the whole yeah. thing tilts back. So, no, 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 uh, no but think at, about it because your sensors you... are designed to. Because to, if you tilt back, your headset is going to pick you mm -hmm. up going backwards. It's a very, it's a very I, fair I tried point. motion. I tried motion simulators as well, uh, and what they basically do is they don't use the rift sensors. Yeah, the, the, this is interesting. They don't it's use a the really interesting sensors. point. It's a conflict because yeah. your head's physically moving back, so it means yeah. that you're going to move yeah. back in your place. There, there's still, I, yeah. I don't know how they did it because I'm, I, I'm also. I mean, if you've seen the videos that I posted, I was almost upside down in there. But uh, and they're also going to do it with flight simulators. But the thing is. Uh, that they, they hit the, the rift sensors behind uh, the device. Maybe should, I'll see those guys again and I'll ask them how they do that. Um, mm. Because it's indeed is a good point, like if you move back. But I mean, there is a way around that because uh, they managed to do it as well. What about IO? Yeah. Like input output on this. In the video, dude sit with a laptop on his crotch like while he's driving. <laughs> watch what watch the doing? other one. There's, there's a second video there. If you play that one as well, you'll uh, see the guy in the HTC Vive. Are you talking uh, about the Also, he, he puts... Yeah, yeah. He puts yeah. the egg under his desk, so you could put it That's under your desk and then you just rest your feet on the egg. Yeah. The one thing that I would like to try, because I'm not a big sim guy, <laughs> I don't like space uh, sort of simulators and stuff, but uh, VR roller coasters, I think that would be a really fun one to try <laughs> in this. Uh, yeah. Just as a simple demo, I think would be uh, a cool one to try. Um, yeah. But also, oh, yeah, like. Sweet, sweet, that, that is right. With Sweet Cessna, they just need to disable the positional tracking. If you disable right. the positional tracking, you can still. Um, uh, Oh, but mm. moving upwards is still the problem then. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. moving upwards. Mm. Yeah. But there's also, Strange. this isn't the only company that are developing these kind of uh, little home VR motion simulators. There's another company, a UK-based company called Feel3, and they're, they're launching their own motion simulator later on this year, and it's going to be, again, a Kickstarter campaign. Uh, they're looking at about £1,500, $2,000, <laughs> €1,700. So it's more expensive, but the one that they're developing is a lot bigger, and it looks a lot more robust. Like, yeah. this kind of one looks like a bit of a toy, whereas the one they're building looks a bit more legit and would would be more something you would see in like an arcade maybe or something like that mm. um, you call don't you, you call this this egg thing not legit <laughs> not really hater it looks more like a kind <laughs> of gimmick so, oh, wow, the, that was great it, it looks more like a gimmick than something that i would personally pick up but then again i'm not a sim guy myself so uh you know if i'm gonna invest know, let, all that see. money then let's see then i'll probably I mean, buy a proper racing rig you know or something like that I do like the design, though. Yeah. Do, do, yeah to be honest, did I actually cool. mention how much those racing rigs cost that I that I tried? They're probably oh, like much. tens of thousands, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Definitely. Yeah. But like the when are you going to have one, Rowdy? A real racer, right? Would have you have your racing bucket seat. You've had your like Fanatec wheel that's like six hundred or whatever, and then mm. you'd also have actuators that would take your bucket seat that's normally static and it's pistons that like move mm. you left and right and does it quite quick and does it with hydraulics so it's quiet so th that's what i'd love to do someday if i ever get a basement to myself i'll feck mm. build something like that but mm. it takes quite a bit of tooling you can't just necessarily pay a price and get the thing shipped to you you have to know yep. what you're doing actually I, I, I just see now on the video that the, the big cube where the guy is sitting in where he's like steering around yeah um they have a Vive controller on the top of it, so yeah, it dude. moves with you. 
Maybe yeah. Dennis to correct for uh, your, yeah. your uh, head position. Yeah, you're right. And that's that that's be. the feel three, which is, the, that's not the yaw. Yeah. That's the feel three, which is the UK developed uh, motion simulator. Oh, okay. yeah. So that's the more expensive one. Because it keeps one. the 3D space in which your, your head is looking. It keeps exactly. that fixed. Have you yeah, guys seen yeah. the chair one? Uh, so the one I was talking to you, Mike, just before we started is called Roto VR. And basically you take no. a chair... Yeah. Like, you know when you're assembling, yeah. like, an office chair, and it's mm. got the base with the casters, it's got the piston, and then you sit the chair on the piston. It right. sits on the piston, basically, and you have um, pedals to go kind of, like, left and right. So, like, you can use this where it will move you, and you can play it with things like, again, Elite or E-Valkyrie, rest in yeah. peace, uh, or, you know, or, or some of the other, like, racing sims and stuff. But... I've never been convinced by it, but it's another one that's been out there for about three years now that yeah. I've known about. I just mm. don't, I've not seen a single one of these pieces of hardware where I actually thought, yeah, I'm going to buy it. And the same thing is true for those frictionless mats or buckets that you, know, you got slippery yeah. shoes and it, none yeah. of them feel right. But then again, but is I, it I, also because of the price? I mean, the prices right now are going through the roof with these uh, things. I mean, yeah. I, I'm just checking the Roto VR chair on the website. Yeah. If you want to buy the, the basic chair, it's like a thousand. Yes, yeah. that's 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 just so much money. Uh, and of course, yeah. If you are totally into the into racing or whatever, then you might buy this. But still, if but, let's say if you want to yeah. buy a play seat now for a PlayStation, like there are a lot of people that have a play seat, for example. It's for yeah. venues. Um, it's, that, I'll tell you what it's for. It's for you know. Remember Mike when we were at OC4 and they had the whole thing with um, uh, what's that movie? We were just talking about it earlier. Uh, Blade Runner. Blade Runner, yeah, uh, yeah. Like, they had this this thing where they had a car out there, and they had a whole bunch of different booths, and it's like, you can try the Blade Runner yeah. experience. Someone would pick yeah. up, like, a Roto VR or one of these things for something like that, where it's like, I want to mm. attract someone in. They're not paying a mm. price. They're just, they're, it's like paying for advertising. Yeah. And then you would, you would, you might be a service who rents those things out to people who are yeah. trying to, you know, put on a stage and get people, track them in, in a mall or that kind of scene. But for a whole user... Also, I, I... I think there is a market for home users because if you look at some people, like some people have bought a VR headset just to play Elite Dangerous in. Some people sure. have bought a VR headset just to play like a set of Corsa in. And I, I know people that like comment on some of my videos that literally are just play racing sims. They don't play any other games in their VR headset. Do you know what I mean? So like there is a market for these and they just want the mm. best experience they can possibly get out of that one genre of game that they play forever, you know? So you never I, know. I gotta say this. Uh, Anyone who hasn't gotten into VR yet, if you do, think about and put some funds to the side for accessories. Because inevitably, yeah. you probably will end up in a position, like I am, where yeah. your wallet <laughs> is bleeding. And you just want to slightly better improve that experience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's totally worth it. It's totally fucking worth it. It's amazing. Yeah, totally. Or, or uh, as Sweet Viver recommends, you could buy two Pimaxes <laughs> for the price of one <laughs> roto chair. <laughs> So you can put one on each eye, one on each eye, like in a vertical yeah. position, like... Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's gonna be a lot of pixels, my friend. So, that's gonna, uh, be, that's gonna, gonna be real 8K then. It's <laughs> 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 <is> so bad! <laughs> Alright. So let's, uh, let's wrap this, sh this week's show up. Like, we, we, we missed out one topic, which is the AR glasses yeah. from Vaunt, but we'll, we'll yeah. talk about that next week's show. But Also, Arc Park, uh, 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 you also forgot that one, uh, of course. Oh, yeah, oh, that uh, was going to be on the little bit of uh, news at the beginning, and that was yeah. Arc Park oh, is uh, yeah. due for release on the 22nd of March, PSVR, yeah. Oculus Rift, and HTC Vive. Uh, so that was just a, a quick throwaway bit of news there. Yeah. Um, throwaway yeah. being the, uh, the explanatory term there. Sorry, I'm not super happy with what I've seen. I think it's going down a beckon basement dive. Yeah, it looks well, awful, to be honest, from what I've seen of it. I already we'll told you out. so many times, what I want is just a Jurassic Park simulator. Just yeah. put me in a Jeep yeah. and like let me drive through that kind of stuff. I just want yeah. ARC in VR. Just do ARC properly yeah. in VR. You sold me. Yeah. That was a good game. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, so like, is there any comments or questions from the chat before we uh, wrap this one? wrap this one up? Um, let's see. So, uh, yeah, uh, of course, a lot of people are hyped for Arc Park. Um, <laughs> yeah. We we have Sweet Viver uh, challenging us to see how well the Pimax is going to do when it uh, uh, launches. And yeah. uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Diesel says, I will admit, though, Assetto Carsa was the most thrilling experience to, uh, to do a race and watch the replay as a passenger is a blast. Nice. Oh, yeah. yeah, you can do that. That's the coolest thing with Assetto is you can record replays of... Oh, man. 
Oh. So you I'm can... not really a racer myself. Hmm. Co-pilot? No, no, I don't think so. That would be no. nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, dirt rally, dirt rally, asynchronous VR gameplay. You sit in the side seat and then let's just do it. Make it happen. Make it you happen. Heard it first, Code Kirk. Masters. You heard it here first. Code Masters. You heard it here first. Code Masters, come on. I need to drive Nathy around. I'll be a chauffeur, you know? <laughs> right, okay, guys. I'm going to close this episode up with me a bunch of nutters. You're absolutely crazy people. So, just to remind you guys that this is a weekly VR, AR, and MR talk show live streamed every Saturday on Nathy's YouTube channel. Tune into the show live at 4 p.m. in Europe, 3 p.m. in the UK, 9 a.m. in Central US. You can check up the re upload, which I do every Sunday on my own channel, Virtual Reality Oasis, or listen to the audio only version available on Google Play Music, iTunes, and SoundCloud. You guys are so freaking weird. Right, on that note, we love you guys. Thanks for being part of the show, and we'll see you in next week's episode. Cheers. Bye. -bye. <laughs> you kissed him. <laughs> <laughs>